Well, hello. I didn't see you come in there. Welcome to another exciting evening in London theatre. You know, technology can be both a pestilence and such a grand pleasure as well, simultaneously. I believe that today, rather than focusing on the drab and tired works of Miles Davis, will bring you the story of the settlizationling of the wonderful city of London, Ontario. Let's watch, listen, and love. The founders of London, Copernicus Johnson and Bob, were vagabonds who happened to drunkenly fall off a boxcar in the future city's location. There was plenty of food available, but the settlers preferred to subsist on the so-called Badata. In the Halicon days of the mid-1980s, 14 hours of sleep was considered essential to accomplishing the day's labors. Copernicus and Bob immediately began clearing the woodland. Success at long last. Once the land was clear, there was ample room for the planting of vegetation and the settlement of the very first households. The house was quickly finished with the shopping malls soon to fall. In those primitive go-go days of the 1980s, there were no markets available from which to procure one's supplies. The early settlers hunted the leopard-spotted Hasselhoffagus entirely to extinction. Indigenous to this region, the Hasselhoffagus was known to be slow and easy to spot. The Hasselhoffagus could be served with locally grown vegetation such as kale, carrots, and reese buds. Oh, hello. You'll be happy to know that the city of London eventually prospered and became the dozenth largest city in the great nation of Canada. Please do join me again next week as we dissect the unauthorized biography of the Guillermo Bridge. Good night. <laughs>